Hi everybody, this is Kimberly from Starfish Design Embroidery Group. I'm here to do a demonstration of the new bag, Chloe, that is coming out very soon. Um, actually, hopefully by the time the video is uploaded, I'll have the file ready to buy. Um, here's Chloe. You can see she has a nice graceful little sh um, curved applique here. I'm trying to make sure I can see, I'm trying a new app. And um, so great for a focus fabric. We had a little bit of a delay in releasing her because when one of my testers was testing, she didn't she cut the fabric a little too trim close here, which I did as well. Um, but she decided to try and fix it by moving the hoop on her machine and rerunning this, and it ended up being a really neat feature. So we actually decided to modify the file <laughs> to do that. So you'll have the option to run that second um trim um, if you want to or you can skip it um you can use the same color or two different colors now I had this light on earlier and it made it too bright I'm going to try this light again and see if it washes it out now it seems okay now okay so um I've gone ahead and ran the first step of um, the placement steps and what I want to show you is that I have included um the actual, make sure I'm still seeing this in the page. The actual pattern here, and you'll this will be a template in the file. So you can print this out on some cutaway or tear away, and then cut this out and have it as your template. So this is the material that I'm using today, and I actually didn't take it upstairs, so I hope it's gonna measure okay and be okay. <laughs> since I didn't do that, but this, what I'm doing, what I'm doing. So what you do is you take this up to your sewing table and then you can lay this out and make sure that you have a place where you want it and that the fabric is going to meet. And mine's going to barely make it with the seam allowance because I didn't think about this Wonder Woman that I have highlighted there, but it'll, it's going to work. We're going to make it work. So, um, Two other options here in the PDF. Um, it's going to explain to stitch the vinyl first and, and bring it down. And then you put this on top and then trim away. <clears throat> but what we found is if you're using fabric, it's better to do the fabric first. Then put the vinyl on top and then um, do the cutaway on the vinyl and do your tack down. <clears throat> so I'm going to reorder the steps in the PDF to demonstrate that and make that the preferred way for fabric. But just know that if you prefer, you can do the vinyl and do the vinyl because it does have a slightly different look and I'll show you at the end. Um, so maybe not, we'll see. Okay, let's get started. So as always, like with any of my designs, um, we're gonna use the center line of the zipper placement here. And this line didn't even stitch well, that's great. So it's good that we're using the center line. And what I like to do is I like to lay my zipper down on one end and get that centered on one end. And then I'm going to walk my zipper down the stabilizer. On the four by four, you don't really need to worry about this so much, but on this larger ones, this is the 7.9 7 by 7.9. Now, basically, it's 8x8, eight eight, but it is actually only 7.9, so I can't label it as 8x8. Eight eight. And I was doing that, and I was reading a comment on some group, and they said that they can't do the 7.9s or the 8x8s eight because their hoop is only 7.9. And I think almost all digitizers are actually doing 7.9, but it's easier to put 8.8. Eight. So anyway, so what you're going to do is you're going to, let's see if I can zoom in to show you this, since I have this expensive software set up to do this. So uh, where's my zoom at? Uh, oh, that's not what I wanted. Okay. I guess I can't zoom. I don't know what I do with my zoom. Uh, what did I just do? Okay. I'm not going to zoom. Um, but I think you guys can see anyway. So you're going to go ahead and center the center of your zipper teeth. This one makes it easy because the, the stitching is white. And you're going to center it right on that line and you're going to walk it down and tape it as you go so i have these skinnier pieces of tape i did actually finally um decide to buy i've invested and bought some 
one half inch wide transpore because what I was always doing for the, my zippers is taking it the regular piece and tearing it down the center. It's like, Kimberly, why don't you just see if there's some one inch? So I'm gonna walk, keep walking it down here. And then I just tape it all on one side. I finally discovered that it's, I get a better finish if I just tape on one side first, then make sure it's smooth and then tape the other side. But I do tape both sides. So I'm gonna move it over here because I like to keep this at a firm, on a firm surface when I'm doing this because you're pressing against the stabilizer and you don't want it to come out of the hoop. And I probably use a lot more tape than other people do, but I'm not about having my fingers inside that hoop when the stitching is happening and I want my zipper to stay down. Because this is actually, this makes or, break, makes or breaks the bag. If your zipper is not even, your zipper reveal is not even, and your zipper can actually look really wonky on the top. And we don't want that. So I'd rather spend a few cents on tape than to not. So I'm gonna get that thicker roll of tape out to tape this um, charm, the zipper pole, and zipper out of the way. I'm gonna be careful because I forgot to put a piece of tape on the top of that zipper tape. So this is from camsnaps.com. She has the black, white, and cream with the silver metallic looking zipper. Um, and then she has the <clears throat> rainbow ones in the other colors. So we're gonna go ahead and run the tack down for the zipper. And I am using poly mesh, not fusible poly mesh, just regular poly mesh um, stabilizer because it's gonna stay inside the bag. So I want it to be soft. And you see it's going through the tape, but this transport tape, it comes off easily. So it's no big deal. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the tape from the right end and the side pieces. I don't need it there anymore, um, but I'm going to leave the tape over there on the left side where my zipper pull is at because I do not want my um, zipper pull to come loose and get dangly inside the stitch area and it potentially could. So it's just a little bit of extra savings there. I had so much tape on my... Um, machine when I reorganized the living room that I decided I'd rather be putting it on the table. Hopefully you guys can still see me. I'm trying to look in this little remote. This program is called Filmic and you get that camera video, camera program, and also a little remote app that allows you to view so I can see what you're seeing. And it also allows you to remote control, do zoom and all that kind of stuff. But um, I had a, I did a trial run before I started logging for the show or for YouTube. And now I don't know what I did wrong that I can't get the zoom up. So I'm just gonna have to wing it. But hopefully it's a little better. I'm not getting all this tape out of here. Hey my, that's good enough. So, all right, so um, next, why does it look like I'm zoomed in? I don't think I am. I'm gonna try and raise you up just a tad. Cause it looks like I'm too close. Okay, so first we're gonna go ahead and get our um, one, our interior, front exterior vinyl, and then our, one of our pockets. So I'm just using this gray. I bought, I found a whole bunch of this material on a um, de-stash site, really cheap. Um, so I bought it because it's perfect for linings. So, and I do have a 9014 needle in. I recommend you always use a 9014 when you're doing the construction. If you're adding extra embroidery, I'll notate to you one to do that. Um, then start with a 7511 to do your zipper and your embroidery. But once you get to the construction of the bag itself, it's better to switch over to a 9014, just trust me especially if you're on a single needle. They do not have enough um, power to get through. So I cut my pieces a little generous. I tried to make them a little generous. I'm trying to learn. So we're gonna line up the lining. So this is the top. So you're gonna put the top upside down, 
lining up with the bottom of the zipper. And if you can't see your zipper because you're not using black, just use those stitch lines. And then we're gonna tape it down. And I used the bigger pieces of tape and I just, on this side, I don't usually have to worry about putting it in the center. When I do the really long ones, I do. So usually just on the side is enough. Then flip it over. Make sure it doesn't come loose. If you need to, you can roll it up and pin it to your stabilizer here. I still don't think you guys are seeing enough of this. Let me try and raise the camera up a little bit more. See if that's any better. I don't know. I can't tell. showing and you're not seeing my whole hoop over here so I think this is good enough okay so now we're gonna go ahead and take our vinyl and we're gonna lay that down um, right side down and we're gonna tape it down so it's aligned with the bottom of the zipper as well and again we're gonna tape it down on both sides and you can tape it in the middle if you need to, if it's a long expanse, okay? And we're real close to my zip, my attachment here. One thing to note, if you have to um, accommodate your attachment, say your attachment's up here or up here, either rotate the pattern so that the bulk of the material is gonna be off the hoop, or roll the material up underneath and tape it out of the way. Okay, so now we're gonna do the thing that I was talking about. So I'm not gonna top stitch. Um, I don't wanna top stitch on my on mine. Um, but if you wanted to top stitch, then you would. This is when you would roll this up, roll this down. I can't get it. Sorry. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, but I want to um, have the what would be the top stitch going through the lining. And it just helps keep the lining out of the way a little bit. So I'm going to pull the lining down in the back anyway. Okay. So I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to pull the lining down. And I like to just lightly finger crease this lining. So just roll it down and then lightly finger crease it. And then just tape it down here. And it's only going to be taped down for just a second just while we do that top stitch. tape it okay then we're gonna put turn this on so if you want the top stitch what the heck let's go ahead and top stitch it since we're already here you want to go ahead and finger press your um, top down if you have a boning tool which I had one here just the other day how did I lose that already okay if you have a boning tool it helps to use that to rub it down and then just go ahead and um, fold this down Finger press that and tape your vinyl to the side. I'm gonna be very careful because this transport vinyl tape does leave a sticky residue on the um, shinier, like the metallic vinyl. So I'm trying to keep that off onto the side where it's not gonna be visible when we're all done. Okay, uh, why does this look like it's messed up here? All right. And then we're gonna run this top stitch. And like I said, you can skip this if you want. Depends on your aesthetics. You see on this one, I did not run the top stitch. I did want the top stitch through this um, special vinyl. But in this one, we'll go ahead and run it. So in that case, I wrote, I pulled the lining down in the back and then I ran the top stitch with this up and then I put the lining back. And I can see right now, I didn't pull this even because see it's not even here. That's what happens. I'm not, I'm gonna not redo it because it'll leave holes in the, it'll leave holes in the vinyl. But I, I should have made sure that that was a little bit straighter. 
Can you see what I mean? Over here, it's a little bit off. It's, most people are not gonna notice. Oh my gosh, I just hit the hoop, unhooped it. Oh, Lord, I hope I didn't mess it up. I got right back in there. <laughs> my goodness, Kimberly. This video may see it, never see the light of day. Okay, hopefully everything is still lined up okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, fold this back up out of the way. And I'm also gonna put a piece of um, scrap tear away under here because this um, satin stitching is really dense. So I'm gonna just put a little bit of tear, extra tear away under here. I'm sorry, not tear away, cut away. And it's just going to give our support a little bit more support to our um, satin stitching. And then we'll trim the extra away when we're done. So I'm just going to tape this down. Normally I'd use one big piece, but I happen to have two scraps here. So using two pieces. All right. Make sure that stays folded up. Again, if you want, you can pin it. And now we're gonna go ahead and run the, oh, I actually didn't change the file around. That's okay. I don't really need to. So what I want is I wanna make sure my wonder is gonna get staying inside this. Let me slide this under here so you can see better. I want my wonder to be inside here. So I'm gonna move it over and then I'm gonna kinda of pull it back and make sure I have enough covering that circle, and I do. It's gonna be just enough. Oh, but my, I'm gonna be too short over here. Oh, my goodness. I should have taken this upstairs. Okay, let's see. I have enough over there. I think part of the little frame is gonna get cut into. Okay, I think this is okay now. So I'm gonna take this down and I'm gonna run the next stitch, which is the, if you have the vinyl down, it will be the placement stitch um, where to trim the vinyl. But we're gonna be, we're going to run the next stitch to know where to um, trim the applique here. Just barely caught that at the top. So doing it this way actually is going to be a good thing. So I'm going to go ahead and um, move my hoop. Um, Grayson? Hello. I'm going to move my hoop down. It'll pull it all the way down here out of the way. Okay, so I can take my hoop off. Uh, did my tape get stuck under there? It felt like it. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and trim my applique, um, my fabric. And I don't really have very much to trim because I um, got it so close on the top. But, so I just only have a little bit to trim out of the seams here. I'm not going to trim from the sides. I'm only trimming over here on the top. If you're doing vinyl, you'd want to get the bulk of that out of there. So I only had to trim off a tiny little bit. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and lay our vinyl down. Make sure your lining is pulled out of the way. Uh, I'm going to make sure the hoop goes back into position. It's just better to do it without the um, hoop on it. I mean the arm. Okay, now we're going to run the um, bean cut line. So again, make sure your vinyl is down. I should have prefaced this to say that I had put um, Decoville light on the back of that fabric. So it gives it more width the same as 
um, make it closer to the vinyl. Had I not done that, then what I would have done was laid the vinyl down and put the fabric on top so that your bag has more stability. Because if you don't, then um, your bag isn't gonna be very stable. If you have vinyl up here and fabric down here, if the fabric was regular fabric, it'd be very like this. If it was just like this, it's very flimsy. But see, I put the Decoville light on that so it gives it more integrity so that um, the vinyl there. So I can cut the vinyl away now. And I I can't assume you're gonna make the pieces this way. So I did do the cut directions as if you're gonna put the vinyl on the whole bag. So you might want to, um, so I'm gonna trim across here and try and reserve this big strip of vinyl. So if you want to choose to do this option, then you might want to just go ahead and measure and not cut as big of a piece of vinyl. I'm on the fence. This is my first time doing it like this. This was what when the tester suggested. So now I'm gonna I have my duck bill on the side of the vinyl on the closest to the stitching, and I'm just cutting along as close as I can get to those stitches, trying not to cut into the stitches. Bailey Grayson. Pull it away from your machine. You have to. I'm sorry. Just a minute. Okay. So I'm going to um, keep trimming this. And you also don't want to cut into your fabric underneath. And it's best to try and do this in one swoop because when you have the big piece of vinyl to hold on to it gives you better leverage to hold the material and get the scissors closer in there i did a pretty good job there put that in my scrap bin Let's see if i can show this to you guys a little closer see around the edges did pretty good so let's go ahead and make sure our lining is out of the way and then we're going to go ahead and run the next two color stops which is the uh, something sticking on here sometimes that tape comes loose underneath and then it will make the machine kind of go bonkers so we're going to run the next two color stops now remember they're optional so what you could do is we're going to run the first one and then we're going to see, look at it and see if we like the look of it, if we have enough coverage. I'm going to run both of them anyway, just because I'm testing it. <laughs> I think I figured out a way to pause this so you guys don't have to watch this all. So I'm going to pause it and resume when it's done. Okay, it's just about done. That took a couple minutes to do, so you guys probably, so I didn't have to hear all that. So I'm actually pretty happy with the way it looks. Um, I'm gonna look at it a little closer. Oh, and I don't like when the presser has to go all the way over to the other side, so I'll probably fix that. But it's, it's very nice and clean all around. So I'm actually really happy with that. But I am gonna run the second one just because, um, that's I'm testing it on this bag and this size to make sure it looks good. It's going to cut into my Wonder Woman a little bit, but that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start this and I'm going to pause the video so you don't have to be tormented with all that. Um, oh, my camera kind of got messed up a little bit while it was doing that satin stitching. So now you can't see it. It's just on the hoop though. I'll be right back. Okay, that's just about done. It's almost perfect. I am going to have to make one little edit to it. But um, otherwise, it's pretty good. So you guys can see that it has this. Oops, helps to lift that up, Kimberly. You get this nice, like, double braided look to the trim. It's really pretty. 
Uh, I like it a lot. I just have one area right here I need to adjust. But again, that's optional. I could have stopped because I had no issues with the first one. So hopefully the um, camera is okay now because it was falling apart with going through all that vibrations from the machine. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and trim away our extra stabilizer on the back. We don't want that extra bulk in our bag. And then um, we're gonna put the lining down. Now, if you wanted to add any extra um, embroidery, now's the time to do it before you put this lining down. Once you put the lining down, you don't want to add anything else. It's going to show through on your lining and we don't want that. Okay, that's good enough. I'm not adding any extra embroidery because it's Wonder Woman, you know, so I don't wanna muck that up. Okay, let's take this extra tape off. That tape has lived its purpose in life. I'm gonna get some new tape. All right, now we're gonna tape our lining down nicely and taut because it's not gonna be lifted again. And you see I didn't do a good job the first time because I got a little pleat there. So um, be very, that's why you really need to pull it tautly if you don't, that little pleat can happen, and that little pleat might stop my zipper from working very well. So I'm just going to have to wing it. Okay, so I have it pulled tautly and taped. Okay, and now this is already down. We can go ahead and remove the tape over here. Forgot to do that. And now we're time to run um, the placement lines for our D-ring strips. Now this is the larger bag. All the bags except for the um, 4x4 have four placement lines. So there's going to be one on either side and then two at the top. So you can choose where to put your placement of your D-ring strap connectors. Or you can skip them all together, but it's kind of hard to carry the bag without some kind of a, something. You'll see oftentimes, especially once I put these on, that I have to lift my um, presser foot up in the back because of the way this Janome pulls to do the string or to do the uh, thread cutting. It goes back and forth. So what I do is I reach back and I, I pull mine off. So I'm going to go ahead and use the top two. So I'm going to line this up and it's kind of hard to see it on the camera. But let me see if you guys can see what I'm pointing at. Right here and right here are the placement lines. And just center it over there, um, however far, far you want. I did want to show you real quick. This is really thick vinyl. And my machine is not going to want to go through four layers of this. So traditionally, we will fold our vinyl in half. Right? Can you see me? And then you fold the center in, fold the, each side into the center, and then you fold it in half again. And you get four layers just like that. But then when you fold it over, you have eight layers. My machine's not about to go through that. So what I do is I draw, take um, a one and a half inch strip of vinyl, draw a line down the middle, and I use the sticky tape. Um, this one is only one eighth inch. And then I use that and press it inside. And I don't top stitch it. But instead of using the sticky tape, you can take it to your sewing machine and top stitch it to hold it down. And then I just roll it, run it in because the raw edges get, are folded inwards, so you're not going to notice them too much when you're carrying your bag. And so then I have half the thickness to go through. My machine is still going to struggle through that. See? The second thing that I do, if your machine can't handle this thickness, just use one thickness of a vinyl, but put something on the back of it, like ribbon, or in this case, I'm using Decoville Light to give it a little bit of strength. So again, I just put this sticky tape and then I'm gonna fold into that drawn line and that's gonna hold it down. Now, your machine may not like going through the sticky tape. I don't know what your machine is like. I'm testing on a Janome 500E and it'll handle it fine but and it's only going through a tiny little bit of sticky tape just to do the d-ring strap connectors so you don't have to worry too much about it getting gobbledygook all over 
I think you guys can see what I'm doing over here, can't you? All right. Now I like to use a long strip of tape to cover my D-ring when I place it because the presser foot can get stuck. If it starts tries to bump up against this, it can get stuck. And I have it upside down. Raw edges go to the top. I like to make sure that my D-ring, the top edge of it is aligned with the top edge of my, with my top stitching. So that's how I like to place it on my machine. I, that's my happy spot of getting my presser foot to go past it. You may need to have yours go a little bit lower. So the idea is you need to make sure this D-ring is down far enough that your presser foot can stick can fit from it's going to stitch right here and then again like about right here you need to make sure your presser foot has room between where the final stitch is going to be and the d-ring so that means it usually needs to be at least a quarter to an at half an inch underneath the um zipper teeth again i use these long strips of tape it just gives the presser foot something to glide against, a bridge, if you will. So I like to call it as a bridge to go against the, um, so it doesn't get stuck on that vinyl. And it may still get stuck on the vinyl. Sometimes it does. So these machines are not made to do these bags. So you need to know, when you buy a pattern, you need to know the limits of your own machine. I spent hours with somebody the other day and I don't think she was, I don't think it was a happy outcome. So it makes me kind of sad. Um, it was a, actually a more simpler bag, but um, she wasn't happy. So that makes me unhappy. Um, but basically it was the limits of her machine. She was using a needle that wasn't strong enough. And you, this is not, these designs were designed, machines were not designed to be going through layers and layers of vinyl. That's a lot of work. Even a regular domestic sewing machine would have trouble. So I'm going to go ahead and start my stitching. And it's going to try, and, when I hear the thread cutting after this stitch, I'm going to lift this up because it's going to try and get stuck on that D-ring if not. See what it does? It would get stuck on that D-ring. So I lift it. That's a Janome thing. And see now it's able to climb over that because I gave it that tape as a bridge. Again, I gotta pull it up because I don't want it to get stuck. You may not have to do that on your machine. You need to know your own machine. But you better be very close to hitting that stop button if you see your machine starting to hit there. Because if you don't, then you're gonna break a needle. And when you break a needle, um, you could throw, the needle shard could get stuck inside your machine or you could throw the timing off on your machine. And it often will throw off the hoop configuration, the alignment of your hoop. So if you have that happen to you, you break a needle or something, or you hit that hardware, do not assume that your pattern is fine. Clo turn your machine off, start it back up, say no when it says, do you want to resume the last pattern, and load the pattern in fresh and new, and then forge fast forward to wherever you got stuck at every I do that every time because I thought for sure one time I didn't have a mistake and I thought for sure it was lined up right it wasn't I ended up having to toss a very expensive probably about $15 worth of materials um, okay so there's that stitch down that stitch down so and I did get this one a little bit crooked do a better job than me so now we're ready to add our back lining and then our exterior panel. So we're gonna turn our back, turn it over to the back, and we're gonna put our back lining. So it's aligned to the top. You can actually make it just go a little smidge above the top of the zipper placement line. We're gonna tape it down. And I'm only taping the top because we're gonna pull this up in a minute. So there's, I'm just gonna make sure the bottom doesn't come undone when I flip it over. And now we're gonna take, and we're gonna run our exterior 
um, back panel. And again, it's going to be right on top of that zipper line. The zipper. Oh, zipper line I'm saying over here. So you can tape it down really well. We have not opened up our zipper yet. We're just going to tape this down first. And we're going to watch it as it goes over those D-ring connectors. Because see how much bulk I just introduced to this bag? So it's going to probably... Let me make sure that my bottom is nice and smooth. It may um, throw the stitching a little bit off when it goes over those D-ring connectors. That's just been my experience with my machine. And I'm using a 90 needle. But you see how thick that is? It has to get over that. It's a lot. I don't know if it threw it off or not. Okay. It didn't throw it off too much. It did throw it off a little bit, but not too much. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm not top stitching this machine. If you wanted to at this point, you could roll this forward and top stitch um, so the back has a top stitch. I don't I don't do that. Um, I leave it, but I make the option available to you. I prefer it not top stitched unless I'm going to flip the zipper forward. What I mean is if you're going to cut the zipper and fold it on top of itself so you have a true top zip, then I do the top stitching. See, it would have got stuck on that if I hadn't held it up. All right, so I'm gonna make sure that my little D-rings are still floating down, okay? We're gonna flip over and we're gonna flip our lining up right now and we're gonna go down and tack down. Oh my goodness, my camera moved on me again. Sorry guys, I didn't notice that. We're gonna um, just do a tack at the bottom to hold the exterior pieces together. So I'm gonna just pull this up here out of the way for right now. So my lining is taped out of the way. And then we're gonna come on down here. And so make sure this is taped. Um, before we do that, I almost forgot, we gotta take the zipper and open up our zipper now. We have to be able to get into the bag later. So take all your extra tape off here. Um, try to remember and do it now because if you don't, it'll get into the seams when you're stitching and it's hard to get out. Okay, lift up my D-ring and I'm gonna pull my zipper pull all the way over here. And you know what, before I do that, um, now's a good time to go ahead and cut the stabilizer out of the back. I like to do it, it I find it's actually better to do it when the zipper is um, fully closed. So all you have to do, let's move that tape, is get a start over here where, can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, you can. So I get a little bit of start and I tuck underneath the stabilizer so I can see just the top of my seam ripper. So I know that it's not cutting into my material or my zipper. And then, so I do the one side and then I come along here and I do ball up, but you can do ball down or whatever. And I hold this material taut and then I just glide the seam ripper right along the edge of the top of the zipper. And make sure you see your silver seam ripper inside there. And then on this side, I do the same thing, but I gotta go ahead and, let me remove this tape a second. I gotta get underneath there and get the little bottom corner here. This is gonna be a little trickier because I have that little flap of extra material, that little tuck. So just again, I'm gonna go ahead underneath and you might have to get your small scissors to get started on it. Okay, I get it started. And then hold on to the stabilizer. Can I get this under here enough for you to see? Hold on to this piece of stabilizer as you glide the seam ripper down. And that will pull the whole tape away. I mean the whole stabilizer away. There you go. So, and this is a trick I learned from mom, AKA um, Ricky Garden, Gardner from String Theory Fabric Art. If you haven't checked her out, check her out. Oh my God, amazing, amazing work she does. 
Um, but I don't know why I hadn't thought of it, but she always removes the stabilizer while it's still in the hoop, and it's so much easier to do. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and remove move my, stable, my zipper open about three quarters of the way. Remember, our lining is pulled up on the back. We don't want our lining to get tacked down right now. Okay, three quarters of the way over. We're not stitching up here anymore, so it's fine. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and pull my vinyl down here. Find some pieces of tape. Oh, uh, Maria, I can't show you my tape thing. I It's all piled. I got it all in a pile, but I will reuse it. We're going to go run and get some dinner after this. And then um, I'm going to do a little Facebook Live. And then this will load tomorrow because it takes hours to load. Okay, so all we're doing right now is tacking the bottom and um, exterior closed. Because we need to have this area open to turn our bag later. And if you've watched my videos, I, I kind of, my very first bag I ever digitized, I did it this way. And then some reason I started doing it differently I'm like, why have I been doing it like that? Where I've gone around the whole exterior, then the lining, and I hate doing it that way. But um, there's a benefit to doing it that way, though, because it does it works better for the vinyl sometimes. Okay, so now we're ready. We got our zipper open on the back. We're ready to go ahead and tape our lining down, and we're going to run our last step. Now, your machine is going to show you, and I'm so sorry I haven't been telling you the steps along the way. Your machine is going to show you one more step. But this is it. We're stopping at step 14. We are not stitching step 15. Step 15 is there just to make sure that your machine doesn't try and get recentered and potentially get hung up on any of the hardware. Okay, this is our last step. And this is going to go ahead and um, stitch our whole bag of And I think you guys got off kilter. You can't see again. Sorry. Technology. You wouldn't need to see it anyway. I was just stitch out my machine. Now it's stitching the other side. Oh, my thread broke. Okay. Sorry about that. Oh, and see that I got tape stuck down here. Remember I was telling you about that. Sometimes it does that. All right. Where's my thread at? You should never ever pull your thread from the top, but this machine, the this arm doesn't come off, so if it gets up in there, I don't have any other way to get to it. You know, that's pretty good for me. I don't usually have this much luck with my machine not breaking. I'm gonna back it up a few st stitches. Now, before you unhoop, turn it to the back and make sure your back is nice and clean. Because once you unhoop, you can't fix that. Mine did a good job. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to remove all the tape that I can find. And we can go ahead and unhoop this. And our front was okay as well. You saw that when we were done. Okay, remove the tape. And it did stitch through the tape up, or the tape over here, which is fine. All right. So a couple things that I want to highlight to you. This bag has um, some subtle curves to it. They're very subtle. Not quite as strong as Midge, but one thing I've been noticing with Midge, as people have been posting their pictures, is that their curves don't look smooth. So I'm going to... Um, show you the trick to making sure your curves are smooth. So first of all, I'm going to come into the back 
and I want to leave a notch right here so it's easier to turn in and have more material for the um when I turn the bag in and these are not the best scissors for this thickness I need to grab my other scissors okay so I just start it on the back so I have my flap ready and then I trim it from the front because it's easier to see the um, thread so trim to about one quarter to I like to do one quarter inch when I'm doing fabric when fabric is in the mix I like to use one quarter now it's sometimes helpful to not cut through your entire zipper tape so let me swerve off here and show you what I mean so if you cut this zipper tape all the way down it makes it um, a little bit more susceptible to pulling out so if you pull it out can you see what I'm doing pull it back like this while you're cutting on either side then you can leave that zipper tape longer um, about a half an inch to a quarter of an inch so I did it on one side and now I have to do it on the same thing on this side so I'm gonna fold it back and then I'm gonna go ahead and trim the rest of this to the seam allowance I was trimming it you see that gives us a little bit extra stability in our um, bag and I'm gonna pull this down because I did not trim it quite the same All right, and then the same thing with these on the top. We don't want to cut those off, so we're basically just trimming the stabilizer away on the top, and then we'll leave those um, D-ring strap connectors connected about um, a quarter inch past the line, so we don't need them that thick. So I'm gonna cut off and leave about a quarter inch. Now the same thing over here, the zipper, I'm going to fold it down and then I'm going to cut my seam allowance on the vinyl side. I'm going to curve right to get there. And on the fabric side, we're going to fold it this way and cut our seam allowance. I'm going to just cut it into it so I can get to it. I would have been cutting it from the other direction normally, but I'm just trying to show you guys. All right. Now we can go ahead and cut it the rest of the way down. And I cut it too short on that side to show you. Again, with fabric, it's best not to cut it that short, like I did. So I'm going right back into that notch that I created. Now, we only need that notch in our lining material. So go ahead and fold your lining back and then you can cut across and get rid of the extra um, applique and vinyl. And if you have pieces big enough to save for straps, then save it. I don't need this much of it, so I'm gonna cut this down to about a half an inch. And I always close my bags after I've already turned them right side out and made sure they look as good as I want them. I'm gonna trim this one down just a tiny little bit should not be doing this on top of my machine. This one is way too long, so I don't need that much, so I'm just gonna cut down again to about half an inch, quarter of an inch. Okay, so here's the trick to getting the nice smooth curves. I already trimmed it really close on this side, but I didn't on this side. So what you need to do is you need to take, I'm gonna grab my other scissors because they are actually better for doing the notching. These Westhoffs, um, are really nice for doing the notching. So what you wanna do is you wanna notch along these curves. And you just go in and go 45 degrees one side, 45 degrees the other side. You don't have to be accurate, it could be a 60 degree triangle, it doesn't matter. Basically you just wanna notch it and get some of the bulk out of the seam from the vinyl. And that's gonna allow this to lay down much nicer inside and give you a much smoother silhouette in your bag. So 
notch, notch, notch. If you have very strong pinking shears that will go through all this vinyl, use your pinking shears. And we don't have a corner on this bag. Normally you would trim off those corners. So, but you see how that's gonna help us smooth it around. This we cut so close we don't really need to notch. Okay, so now if you need to use the hemostats to help turn it, go ahead and grab those guys, but I don't know where mine are at right now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it um, without. So reach inside, reach inside here, and then it helps to just grab and get one corner out at a time of the um, top. So like here, so try and grab one of them and pull them down through the lining hole. Now, if you tear it, it's back stitched, but if you tear that, don't worry about it because you're gonna be sewing or gluing this closed anyway. I like to use Fabri-Tac to glue mine or double stick tape. Um, I've since, I like the feel of the, the Fabri-Tac better because it kind of melts and, and I just pulled out my stitches. So be careful <laughs> to do what I did. But I like the Fabri-Tac because it blends, bleeds into the fabric and actually holds the fabric together better than the tape, whereas the tape just feels like a ridge in there. So I got one side out, so now I'm going to work carefully to get the other side out. More carefully than it was, because I just cut the, tore my stitches. That's not what you don't want to do. Alright, so once you get it to the lining side, I like to make sure and smooth out my lining side before I start doing the other side. So push that through on that side. Make sure it looks pretty good. You guys still see what I'm doing? Okay, now we're ready to turn it right side out. Now you might have to go ahead and reach in here and get your zipper and push it open a little bit more to do that. My zipper pole kind of got wonky and doesn't want to do that. There it goes, it went a little bit more. Not much, but a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna try and turn it out without the zipper being all the way undone because it's not wanting to come undone. The pole got a little crooked and I'm having trouble fixing it. So again, just carefully turn it um, to the right side through the zipper. And again, you can close yours first and then turn it. I prefer doing it this way because if I made a mistake and something got too close, I can still turn it to the all the way out as if it came off the hoop and sew it on my sewing machine and fix it and recover the bag. But once you glue that closed, you can't do it. So it's double turning for me, but I don't mind. All right, it's hard to stay on the camera and do this. And with a decoville in there on the fabric, it makes it a little bit stiffer to turn as well. Okay, so you see I'm working now. Now you wanna work into those curves with your fingers or hemostats or whatever. And when if you get into that curve with your hemostats, the opening, you can actually get up inside